Uh, I've been asked to give you guys a few tips on just general guidance for life safety uh, and just some chopping techniques as well. Um, I think the most important couple of things to start off before you even pick up any fruit and vegetables, make sure you've got a nice heavy chopping board. Plastic or wood is the best way to go. I don't want to see any glass chopping boards. Um, you want to secure it down, so maybe like a wet little bit of paper towel or um, a chunk stop or something like that underneath, just to stop it moving around. So if the board's not going anywhere, you're not going to slip and you're not going to cut yourself, which is always a very good way to use a knife. Um, so I've got I've got a local knife here, which is a Japanese-made knife, and it doesn't really matter what kind of knife you use, as long as, you, as, long as it feels right in your hand. This is a very lightweight knife. Some um, knives are made and I imported from Germany and Australia are very heavy, and so it should just it should feel right. The other thing that I'd recommend as well is a block of knives is usually can you know be anywhere up to several hundred dollars. Where say uh, one knife from that block might only be fifty or hundred dollars. I actually think you're better off buying one really good knife than spending the same amount of money and buying a block of knives that isn't very good. Because um, you always end up with you have six knives in a block and there'll be one or two that you've got no idea what to do with and another couple that you very rarely use. I reckon if you've got a big knife like this and a little paring knife, you can do just about any job in the kitchen. So onto the food. Uh, so I've got just a couple of onion sticks. I think this is something that people struggle with a little bit, not just because they make you cry, but uh, just the technique of getting it right as well. There is a right and a wrong way of, of uh, dicing an onion or, or slicing it. Um, so first thing obviously I need to do, I'm just going to take off both ends. And there's a little root end here from where uh, the onion grows in the ground. I'm just going to take just a little bit of that off. That's actually quite important because it actually holds the whole onion together. So I've got a little bowl here as well. I think it's a good idea to have a little bit bowl um, on your workbench so that when you're chopping lots and lots of things, you don't end up crowding your board and then you end up working in the tiny corner of your board. This way, if I keep putting the ingredients that are prepped into, into my pot or, or bowl or whatever, I've got a little bin bowl here as well. I've got a clean board all the time. So that little root that we were talking about, that uh, I've just taken that off, and that's what holds the whole onion together. If I cut through that, straight through the middle, and then peel it, a little bin bowl. You can use a, just your fingernail or a smaller knife if you like to feel this. This is probably a, a slightly ridiculous peeling knife. But, uh, to be able to get the pieces off relatively quickly. If you use a nice sharp, nice sharp knife with onions as well, you actually cry less because the more you bruise the onion, the more it's going to release its juices and the more you're going you're to cry basically. So a sharp knife is a good knife. Great, so now we've got um, just a little root bit here. And that's going to hold the onion together. It's really important that I don't cut through that, that I, um, when I'm dicing the onion, I'm going to make cuts through this way and then I cut parallel the board and then I'm going to turn it on a 90 degree angle and slice through those cuts but never actually cutting through that root. And what will happen is if you cut through the root what happens is after you make the first couple of cuts your onion starts falling to pieces where if I cut first towards myself with the root facing away and then parallel back to the board and then now I've got the root facing this way. So you can see, even though I've made 10 cuts in this already, it's not falling apart, which is cool. And then just finally, slowly just slicing through the onion, making sure I'm not, I'm not doing this, I'm not hacking at the onion, I'm not, you can notice that when you're chopping correctly, the knife's almost making no noise at all because it's that rocking motion, not a not straight up and down motion, right? And then when it gets a little bit hard to, to balance, you can turn on its side, go through again. Turn on its side again. And okay, that little bit's being stopped. And then I put this into a bowl and then I've got my other half of an onion as well. And slicing is, uh, is very similar. Uh, the only difference is this time I cut all the way through rather than just most of the way through the onion. So I've got the root uh, to, facing to the left. And then just notice as well the equally important it's not just about what your right hand, I'm a right hander if you're left hander, obviously it's the opposite. No, it's not just about what my right hand's doing, it's equally important about what your left hand doing, because if you're going to cut anything, that's going to be the one. So make sure you've got it, your fingers tucked underneath, your thumb behind that one, you don't want your thumb poking out. So we don't want to see any flat hands, we want to see it nice and tucked away. Using this hand to guide the knife. Just nice and slow, evenly sized. Slice the onion. I mean, it starts to get a bit hard. Flip it over again, just like we did with the slice before. And slice through the final bits. Great. So that's uh, that's how to dice and slice the onion.